just a, a bit of background on uh, what I've done in the past that sort of led me here. Um, I have this fascination with the sea level rise and um, have portrayed it in my maps in a variety of ways. Um, most recently, uh, the Petro Future series, where I take all of these um, uh, gas station maps and then superimpose sea level rise on top of them. Uh, I did a talk on this uh, last year in Pittsburgh. Uh, so California and the East Coast. And uh, the latest one I had in the map gallery earlier, um, that's Tacoma on top of a vintage mobile gas station map. Um, the retro future was, came before that and using these old USGS quads. This is uh, sort of a, a politic of, um, of Los Angeles uh, going from west to east from the night to the uh, 1920s with sea level rise on top of it. And then that's them all stitched together. Um, I've also done game maps. Uh, I did this long, like year long project with this uh, company um, uh, here in the Northwest uh, that I can't talk about, but I can show you these really fuzzy things. Um, uh, it, it was under NDA and then the project went nowhere and uh, I have some cool maps that I can look at and can't show anyone else. But, so, uh, did a, a world map and a region map and it was a lot of fun. It was actually probably the most fun I've had uh, with cartography. Uh, it was just a blast. Um, and, oh, and then some other sea, sea level rises maps. This, uh, these are the ones that got me started when I started doing these with uh, different cities. Um, and I tried to give them all a bunch of funny names, uh, place names. Um, and, uh, and here's LA. And uh, this caught the eye of, um, of this guy uh, that I that I met. Um, uh, his name's Alex McDowell, and he's a production designer. Um, and he's a professor at uh, the USC um, School of Cinematic Arts. And he is the director of uh, the World Building Institute there. And he teaches classes on world building. And, and he has this whole um, model of, uh, of how he goes about creating worlds. And he's created some very interesting worlds. Um, so a production design, he's a production designer. And what does pr production designers, uh, they visualize the, the, um, the production. They basically do world building for cinema. Um, so uh, some of the, here are some of the worlds that he's, that he's built. Uh, I kind of looked into what he had done. And, um, and I was just like, OK, this is really interesting. He asked me if I would come and do uh, a guest lecture for his class on um, the ways that I uh, create worlds with uh, uh, sea level rise. And I was just like, absolutely, yeah, I want to do this. And um, so I put together a, a lecture and some examples of, of how I would go about making uh, fictional worlds. Um, it, the, the class is also part of the Junk Consortium, which is this worldwide uh, sort of association of different schools uh, of creative folks who imagine um, the world uh, after collapse and what could be built from the remnants of, of that world. Um, so US, Argentina, a few others. Um, and each school uh, being in a, you know, very, very different places, uh, they bring their own cultural, uh, um, uh, they, they bring their own cultures, cultures into this uh, junk world discussion. Um, so, the, um, the uh, model that he developed is uh, Mandala. And um, uh, this, is, this is my edition. It's, it's foundation on geography. 
but um, it has elements of you know culture, infrastructure, um, uh, all all other things that that could build a society. And so he um, will then have the students fill in all the elements of that society. And in the middle, you have the story. So first, you know, if you're going to create a story in a fictional world, first you create the world, and then you create the story based on the world that you've already created. Um, typo. So what I did uh, for his class was, um, and this, this was sort of a thing that I had done in the, the game maps, where I'll take an existing, um, uh, an existing uh, uh, play, play, place in the world and um, combine it with other elements to create something new and unique. And so what I did with this, this is uh, the uh, DEM of the LA Hills, um, you know, with Hollywood down here and, uh, um, you know, Burbank up top. Um, and then I took this uh, DEM of a place in Arizona that I had been uh, as a kid, um, uh, the Meteor Crater outside of Winslow in northern Arizona, and then um, combined them into a single DEM. So we can imagine what LA might look like if it had been impacted by a massive meteor. And then we can do the same thing with a, uh, an aerial photo, where we take the same place, and then we combine the aerial photo of, um, of Meteor Crater, and then we create this. And then we can take it into you know, GIS, or in this case, I took it into Blender, uh, combined the DEM with the, uh, the aerial photo, and then added the crater. And then you can do things like sea level rise and, and do all sorts of things like that. So to, to create a world that uh, exists after uh, a disaster. Uh, and this is, this is the example that I gave the students. And um, uh, it seemed to be very well received. Um, didn't hear back for a while. Um, about six months later, I was, I was on an island, and I, I get a call uh, from Alex, and he says, hey, I'd love to do a collaboration with you uh, for the next couple of uh, semesters. Um, and he had some ideas about what he wanted to do, and then I had some ideas about what I wanted to do. Um, and by the way, you have three weeks to, uh, to do this. Uh, so what he wanted to do is uh, for me to create uh, the geography of this world that the students will then build cultures on top of. Um, and um, yeah, it's, I was excited. And, and so I started, um, we started sort of just talking about uh, what sort of um, elements that we would want in this world. Um, and we uh, settled on islands, and we wanted to create an archipelago. Um, and I have some ideas on how to do this. Uh, how do you make islands? First, you find some cool mountains, and then you add water. Uh, and you know, as, as cartographers, we are uniquely suited to do this sort of thing. Um, and so I had been, um, uh, about a year before, I'd been doing some just messing around, looking at uh, mountain ranges in uh, North Africa. And um, I was really interested in making islands out of those places. Uh, so I um, uh, brought this up with Alex. You know, here, here are some uh, ideas on what we could do. Um, and I'd made some renderings uh, the year before. And so I pulled these out. And, um, and then some of them I added some water to, to, to make some interesting patterns, some interesting uh, archipelagos that you could make some interesting societies on and, and have different societies uh, and have that sort of tension that might come between uh, two, or more, uh, two or more cultures on different uh, islands. Um, but ultimately, 
we settled on this place. Um, this is, uh, is the, um, the Tepuis of Venezuela. And um, they make really cool islands. Uh, so this is one area that, that I pulled out, and then uh, the other area, that makes a really cool island. I was really excited about doing this. Um, so the Tepuis of uh, Venezuela, if you've seen the movie Up, uh, that was the inspiration for the place that they went. Um, you know, it, it actually exists. That exists almost in real life. It looks like that. If you look, I don't know if you can see, but there's a waterfall that comes off of there. And then in the larger context, uh, this, is, this is just a part of this uh, huge ancient mountain range. Um, so the, the, tep the, the Tepuis uh, are in Venezuela, um, Guyana and Brazil, most of the, mostly in Venezuela. Um, and this is the area that I was looking at. And, um, you know, there were two different places that, that I had showed you uh, earlier, uh, one up top there and then another area down in there. Those were the, like, three mountains that I was really interested in doing something with. And so what I did is um, I took the elevation, I clipped out the, um, the DEMs and brought them into World Builder. And I don't know if any of you have heard of World Builder, or if you've ever worked with World Builder. It's a really powerful um, uh, environmental uh, generator. And you can, you can bring DEMs in, and you can move them around, and you can do all sorts of stuff. And so um, I brought it into World Builder, that one, and then kind of pulled that one in there. Uh, this is how it looks, uh, rendering in World Builder. There are a lot of things that you can do, like um, sculpting canyons and mountains and, and dunes and all sorts of things, blocky cliffs, tons and tons of stuff. And I've only scratched the surface of this stuff. And um, I, I did a lot with the, uh, the game maps. I used it quite a bit. Um, and. Uh, uh, with this, I really did more of just combining and maybe adjusting some uh, elevations here and there. But you can also add uh, ecoregions. And uh, based on you know, all sorts of different parameters, you can create diff different ecologies in different places. And so I um, added those as well. And then uh, if you want to, in World Builder, you can, you can render it out like this. You can do fly-throughs. You can export it to um, you know, other sort of game engines, 3D engines, if you want to, Blender or uh, any of the, those industrial strength ones that I have never used. Um, and that looks pretty cool. I was really happy with how that looked. But that's not really the direction, as a cartographer, that I was going. Um, this is sort of the, the process that I went through. Uh, did some 3D modeling in Blender and you know uh, all sorts of things to to combine different layers, and then edit it in Photoshop. Um, and finally, so it uh, this was the uh, archipelago that the students used in the first semester, um, and then the next semester. Uh, we added a little area down in that South Island where the, um, a, a culture had uh, excavated out a big side of the island to extend the, the flat areas. Um, and I also made cities, different places. Um, this was sort of the, the favorite that I put the most work into. Um, this one was uh, uh, originally based on this ancient Greek city, and it looks nothing like that city anymore because I had to adjust it to the, to the terrain uh, to make it fit. Um, and then this one was fun, just sort of the concept was uh, it's, a, it's a dry place, and they're building, uh, they've built their city around these cisterns that they, they use to store water. Um, and then this was just a, um, 
I grabbed a bit of uh, Versailles and uh, put that right there on that peninsula. Um, and this, uh, the, the drowned city in the bay, uh, is uh, Mexico City. Uh, and then there's the, uh, uh, the area where we uh, had this massive quarry that someone had pulled down and then a lake formed in there at some point. Um, so the students uh, took that work and they, um, and they built societies on top of it using the geography as a foundation and then um, uh, Alex's mandalas as a guide to, to create these cultures. Um, and so I'm, let's, I'm just going to try to click through these and we'll see if they work. Um, so this is uh, the first semester. Um, the uh, students created um, these cultures that correspond to the geography. I actually didn't realize that, uh, that um, he wanted to use this uh, LA map. Um, But they used the um, LA map as a, a geography uh, on which they built their cultures. And here's how they fill in the mandalas. And, um, and then they create uh, stories based on the cultures. that are based in the mandalas, that are based uh, on the geography. Um, that was the first semester. And then the second semester, uh, very similar, but um, um, much more intense. Uh, the, these students really got into um, a lot of really interesting, you know, putting a lot of interesting things into the world. They developed folklores, architectures. Um, Psychogeographies, how, uh, how a person might pass through this world, how they would experience it. Um, And then here's a, an example of a filled-in mandala. The, um, the worlds that they created uh, are very positive, and it was really nice to see that. It was, uh, you know, I, I, kept, I keep referring to it as a solar punk vibe, but, um, uh, and it kind of is. Uh, but um, it's hopeful to me that uh, the people can imagine beautiful places in the future, that people can imagine uh, you know, good cooperative cultures that emerge from you know, whatever, uh, whatever we have going on now. Um, so I'm going to go back here. So what would I change if I, I've been thinking about this a lot, like what, how, how could I have done this better? Um, the, the line between geography and culture is tricky. You know, the geography was supposed to be my contribution to this collaboration. But the moment I put a road, the moment I draw a house on the map, I am making assumptions about that culture. Um, but they want to have these things in the map. So it's really fuzzy, and that needs to be thought out a little more about, uh, about how we're going to do that. Um, what 
Um, and too much west. All of the, the cities that I built were based on western models. And um, I should have looked further afield. Uh, there are, there's rich, rich inspiration out there that, uh, that I didn't take advantage of. And I would do that differently next time. Um, and it, yeah, especially to indigenous, uh, indigenous societies, um, thinking especially about uh, Rosemary's presentation yesterday about um, the land divisions in Hawaii, the native land divisions. Um, and spacing and scale. There were um, some things I would definitely change about that, how the islands were spaced, how they related to each other. Um, if I'm building this world, I can you know, do whatever I want. And I, and I think I made them too, too close, too tight. Um, and that is it. Um, any questions? <laughs>